الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام التحية والإكرام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب إله العالمين المخاطب طه وياسين الذين سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرض بأبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المقسمين المكلومين المنتخبين المنتجبين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين روحي وروح العالمين لتراب مقتمه الفضاء واللعنة الدائمة الباقية على عدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وحاسب حقوقهم أجمعين أما بعد فقط قال الله سبحانه تبارك وتعالى في محكم كتابه ومتقن خطابه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين مساء سلوة محمد رحمه in honor of uh, Sikh Holy Imam Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam sallayhi Allah salawat ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad and to hasten the reappearance of our awaited Imam Sallayhi Allah salawat ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad Every Imam and every occasion that's associated with each of those Imams السلام, is important, it is a occasion which is of high significance. The day that they come into this world and the day that they leave, the day that they may share. All of these days are of significant importance. But we know that with regards to some certain of our Aimma there is more significant relating to, particularly relating to us. And amongst them is Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu Because the identity of our faith and our own identity is attached to Imam Sadiq When we say or we introduce ourselves and our faith, we say we are Shia Imami Ja'fari. And that we are associated and identified through Imam Sadiq So of course his day and day associated with him, his life and his contribution to our faith is particularly significant to our lives. Therefore, in the Hozat, I remember when I was studying in Najaf, we used to have a whole week of Majalis for Imam Sadiq That his contribution to our faith is so significant and particularly his contribution to knowledge, particularly the fact that it is his contribution to knowledge in our faith that means that faith has survived up, in this, up until this day. There are certain things that are unique about him as well. First of all, the fact that his, his own name is unique compared to the names of the other Ayyamma and when it's asked about this name, Ja'far, what does it mean? Imam says that this is a name of a river in paradise, in heaven. And the way that water flows in the river, that's the way that he spread knowledge throughout the Muslim world, throughout the people. It's mentioned that he had 4,000 people studying under him at the same time. 
So at one time there were 4,000 people who were studying under him. So there's this particular significance about him and about his life. The first thing, like we said, is important is about his life itself, that he has, out of all of our Imam Salam, he has the longest life. He lives for 65 years. He was born on the 17th of Rabi'ul Awwal, 83 after Hijrah, the same day as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was also born on 17th of Rabi'ul Awwal and Imam Sadiq Alaihi Salam also on 17th of Rabi'ul Awwal. Of course, it's a very we wouldn't say coincidence because there's no coincidence when it comes to Allah but it's a nice coincidence regarding the Prophet and Imam being born on the same day because the title of the Prophet is also as Salih and the title of Imam al -Islam is also as Salih and the principles of our faith the principles of our beliefs were explained to us by the Prophet and the principles of our practices, of our fiqh, and of our jurisprudence was explained to us through Imam Sadiq That we know that every single aspect of our fiqh, from the chapter on Taharat which starts, and all the way up to the end in the Bab of Mu'amalat, every single aspect has a hadith from Imam Sadiq that he has the longest life and he has the most opportunity to preach this from the pulpit as well he is the first of the Imam after the Prophet Amir al migrates to Kufa he is the first out of the Imam to be able to have the opportunity to preach from the member of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina. And he stood, he stood there and he said, Qala Rasulullah, my grandfather Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So somebody objected to him and said that there's many generations between yourself and Rasulullah. How can you say Qala Rasulullah? without mentioning that who did you hear this narration from so Imam alayhi salam said that every single narration that I mention is from my father Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam who mentioned only narrations from his father Imam Sajjad alayhi salam who mentioned narrations from his father Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam who saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so, he says, this is our chain of narration, whereas other chains of narration may have different individuals in them. In this chain of narration, there is only infallible Imams. And Imam says, every single hadith that I'll mention from the Prophet will be a hadith that has this same chain of narrators. So this is his time, and he also, amongst his Unique traits is the type person or the Imam who sees the most rulers in his time. There are seven different rulers in the time of Imam Sadiq five of them from Banu Umayya and the two of them from Banu Abbas. Seven different rulers over this 34 years of Imam. So of course he has a long life, then he has a long period of Imamat and he has the opportunity to preach the faith. And this opportunity is also this opportunity means that he has opportunity to do lots of other things. For example, there's a person from Khurasan called Sahal Khurasan who comes to see Imam Sadiq And he comes to him and he says to him that there are a lot of your followers in Khurasan. So I suggest to you that you should rise up, this is the best time, and take over the government. So Imam al -Salam says to him that you see there's the oven over there, I want you to sit in the oven. 
So he gives the reply that I would have given if I said the same thing to him. That I'm telling you, you should overthrow the government and take over the power. You're telling me to sit in the oven. I'm giving you advice to take over the government. You're telling me go and sit in the oven. So as soon as he says this, this conversation is happening, another companion of the Imam comes. He's Harun al Makki. And he's come back from Hajj, and on the way back from Hajj, he's come to see Imam al Salam. So when he comes to see Imam al Salam, Imam, Salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam. Imam says to him, I want you to sit in the oven. So now he opens the door, he goes, sits inside the oven. And he closed the door. Now Imam says to Sahal Khurasani, what's the weather like in Khurasan? So now imagine that you just saw that a person came in, Imam told him, send the oven, he then sat in the oven. And now Imam's asking, what's the weather like? So now he's sweating, he's thinking, what's going on, what's going to happen to him, he's sitting in the oven. And Imam is asking me about the weather. So Imam says to him, you look like you're worried about him. He says, if you're worried, open the door and see. So he opens the door and he sees that he's fine, there's nothing wrong with him, he's not burning in the oven, there's nothing wrong, he's sitting very comfortably. So Imam salam says to him that how many people are there in Khurasan like him? How many people are there like him? So Sahal says, to be honest with you, there's nobody like him. So Imam says, you answer your own question. That you came to advise me that I should overthrow the government. But there's not even a single person like him. If I overthrow the government, how am I going to take over the government? If there's nobody who's willing to listen to me over something which is so simple and little. So these are two options that Imam has. He has the option to take over the government. Or he has the option to propagate knowledge. So which option does he take? He says there's no option to take over the government because there's nobody like Harun Makki. There is the option to propagate knowledge, to teach people, to educate people. And by doing so, he's given us a principle. He's given us the principle that the most important thing if a person has the opportunity to do so is to educate. That's the most important thing in the eyes of Imam Sadiq that when you have the opportunity to educate people, what's the power of this? The power of this is that if you're in government, if you have the power, your power is going to last for a limited amount of time. But if you educate people, if you teach people, as long as the knowledge survives, you have control over them. If you educate people, then as long as that knowledge survives, you have control over those people. Today our madhab is indebted to Imam Sadiq Why? Not because he came into power or not because anybody came into power. Because hundreds of people came into power and they left. And there's no memory of them. But there's memory of Imam Sadiq because of the amount of people that he educated. Because of the people that he showed that this is the value of learning and teaching when you pass it on because knowledge is the one thing Imam has this famous hadith which he advises one of his companions that knowledge is the only thing that increases when it is shed everything else will decrease Everything else, if I give it to somebody, it will decrease. I will have less of it. But knowledge, if I give it to another person, it will increase my own. No, if I share it with other people, it will increase my own knowledge. <laughs> and there are certain characteristics of Ayyam which are mushtarak common amongst all of the Imams. For example, one of them is knowledge, 
And that is the way that we identify who is the Imam. Because there is a time in the time of Imam Sadiq particularly, but in after Imam Sadiq almost every single Imam during the time of every single Imam. That there is a debate, a dispute, a disagreement over who is the Imam. So how do you identify who is the Imam? You identify the person who is the Imam through his through his knowledge. Because the, that is the one thing that you can't make up, you can't hide, and you can't... Uh, what's the word? It's very easy to identify if somebody knows something or not. If, for example, I make the claim, for example, I make the claim that I do a lot of ibadah, I do a lot of worship. How will you be able to identify whether this claim is true or not? You know, you have to spend 24 hours with me. You have to spend the whole 24 hours with me, then you'll find out whether what I'm saying is true or not. But, conversely, if I make the claim that I know everything, it's very easy to find out. All you have to do is ask a question. All you have to do is ask a question. If you ask a question and I know the answer, then okay. If I know, don't know the answer, then you'll know that definitely that this person doesn't know. Doesn't know everything. Imam alayhi salatu wasalam is identified through his knowledge. The difference between Imam alayhi salam and other persons and any other person's knowledge is that the Imam also knows his knowledge extends to the fact that he knows what I'm thinking. He knows what I is in my mind or he knows the question that I didn't even ask. He has the answer to that as well and that's how we identify who is an Imam. Wow. 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 So this is one characteristic that's common amongst all of the Imams that we recognize them through their knowledge. Another characteristic which is common amongst all of the Aymma is their courage, their bravery. But there's different ways of demonstrating courage. There's different ways of demonstrating bravery. For example, the, usually when we talk about bravery, we talk about courage, we think that it is in the battle person who is brave or is courageous is one who is able to face the enemy in battle. But Imam Hussain who is one of the two Aimma to be in battle, says Kalimatul Haq in the Sultan al Jair. That's the greatest demonstration of courage according to Imam Hussain that's Kalimatul Haq in the Sultan al -Jai. For a person to say the truth in the presence of an oppressor. In the presence of a ruler who is oppressive. Why? Because that ruler has got the power to punish me. If I say something that he doesn't like, he has the power to punish me. But if I still in his presence say Kalimatul Haq, say that, well, that which is true, then that is the greatest form of courage. Imam Hussain alayhi salam. What does Imam Sadiq alayhi salam do? Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Muhammad alayhi salam. Mansur Abbas, he calls Imam alayhi salam in the court. And he asks him, he says, everybody is afraid of me. Everybody is scared of me. But you're not scared. Why? In Ilm al Mantiq, we have a saying or example that we use to try and understand the other person's mind. One of them, they say, the ulama of Mantiq say, that aql, intellect, it's like an, a mirror. It's like a mirror. What does it mean? It means that whatever's in the mirror, it reflects that which is 
in front of it. So they say the aql, the intellect is like a is like a mirror. Whatever a person is themselves, that is what they see in the other person, in the person that they are trying to understand. So Mansur Abbasi is worried, why is it that he is not scared of me? Everybody is scared of me, but he is not scared of me. Why he should be scared of me? Because I am a tyrant, I am a zalim, I am a person who is oppressing people. So everybody should have fear in them. Imam al -Salam replies to him. What does he say? Imam says that neither do I have any worldly possession that you might steal from me that I should be scared. Nor do you have anything for akhirat, for the next life that I want to take. So neither I have anything that is worldly, that is for dunya, that you would want to take it from me. Nor do you have anything for akhirat. Imagine, this is whom Imam is saying to Mansur Abbasi in his palace. So now Mansur Abbasi says that I want you to stay here and advise me. Imagine. Mansur Abbasi is saying to Imam, I want you to stay here and advise me. Imam al -Salam says that the one who is concerned about hereafter, about Akhirah, that person will not stay with you. The person who is concerned about Akhirah will not stay with you. Why? Because you are an oppressive ruler and there is no uh, Ilaqa, there is no reason for a person who is concerned about Akhirah to stay with somebody who is going to take him towards hellfire. No, the one who loves this world, that person will not advise you. The one who has love for dunya, that person will never advise you. Now imagine that Imam al salam says this in, this in the court of Mansur Abbas. So he's demonstrating Kalimatul Haq in the Sultan that you have to say what is true even and especially where that person has the power to punish you. Why? Because the truth has the power to make a person free and also make a person brave, make a person courageous. Imam alayhi salam through this is demonstrating that yes I am the Imam and therefore, I'm not scared because I don't need anything from him. And he can't do any harm to me. Imam Amirul al in a famous saying says that the angel of death is my protector. It's protecting me. The angel of death is protecting me until my time comes. Before my time comes, nobody can harm me. And when my time comes, nobody can save me. Right? Before my time comes, nobody will harm me. Whatever they do, nothing will harm me. And when my time comes, nobody can save me. So when I know that this is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I have no fear. What, what, why is it that I have fear? Because I don't truly believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is controlling me. Salli wa ta'ala Muhammad wa Now Imam al salatu salam during his time is the time where things have spread out into different parts of the different parts of the world. Followers of Imam Salam no longer reside in one place, in one area, in one locality. They live in different parts of the world. And for this reason Imam Salam himself also migrates for a short period and then comes back to Medina. We'll come to that in a minute. But due to this fact that there are now followers of Imam in different parts of the world, Imam salam also sees it significant to propagate the knowledge and make sure there are people in every part of the world who have the knowledge of Imam salam so that they can teach it to other people. And when those people are not able to come to Imam salam, he tells them, Go to that person in your area and 
get your answer from him and consider his answer to be my answer. This is called the Wakala system that Imam al -Salam develops in his time. Then, of course, he knows what's coming. Imam Musa ibn Jafar is going to come and he's going to spend most of his life in prison. People will not be able to access him. And after Imam Rida salam, from Imam al Jawad salam, onwards up to our present Imam salam, there's going to be very limited access for people to come to Imam. So he's training the system, gradual system of how to go to people, what is the system of getting knowledge of Ahlul Bayt and Abu Salatu Salam from people. This is Imam Al Salam showing the way, the system. So Imam Al Salam is training all these people in all these different parts of the world. And how amazing they are. We'll mention a few of them. One of them is a companion of Imam Al Baqir Al Salam and Imam Al Sadiq. And he knows 30,000 hadith from Imam al Baqir and 16,000 hadith from Imam al Sadiq. 46,000 hadith he knows. One day, there's a masala issue problem that comes to Imam Abu Hanifa. What's the issue? Issue is that. And this and this in those days a very common issue. <coughs> the issue is that a woman was pregnant, she was about to give birth, and she died. In that time it was very common. That just before giving birth, or many times at the time of giving birth, a woman would die. So this woman she's about she was about to give birth and she's Died. So what shall we do? Do we bury the woman like it she is with the baby inside the womb? Or do we remove the baby from the womb and then bury the body? What do we do? Imam Abu Hanifa says, I don't know the answer, but I know somebody who knows the answer. So he sends one of his students in the middle of the night to Muhammad ibn Muslim. Muhammad ibn Muslim. He is the companion of Imam. 30,000 hadith from Imam al Baqir, 16,000 hadith from Imam al Sadiq. In the middle of the night, that person knocks the door. Muhammad ibn Muslim is sleeping. He wakes up. He says, What's up? says to him that we have a problem, we have a masana, that the baby is in the womb and the mother has died. What do we do? Muhammad ibn Muslim says that saving the life is paramount. You have to remove the baby and then bury the womb. That person comes back, he tells Imam Abu Hanifa this is the ruling. Next day, Muhammad ibn Muslim is passing by the Masjid of Kufa. This is in Kufa. He's passing by the mas Masjid of Kufa. And he hears that Imam Abu Hanifa is giving a dust lecture in there. And he's saying that if the woman dies while she's pregnant, then you have to remove the baby and then bury the woman. And Muhammad ibn Muslim realizes that that person who came in the middle of the night to ask me this question was from him. And this is one of the students, one of the people who is educated by Imam al -Salam. For example, there's another person educated by Imam al -Salam, And he's famous as Mu'min at And he's also famous for having a very amazing sense of humor. Muhammad al is very amazing sense of humor. So one day, Abu Hanifa comes to Muhammad al and he says that, I heard that you believe in Raja'ah. That Raja'ah, what is Raja'ah? Raja'ah is that after I am, alayhi wa salatu wa salam, all of them have been made shaheed, 
they're going to come back to life. Imam Sahib is going to come and then after him, A'imma alayhi wa salam will come back to life. And with A'imma alayhi wa salam, certain believers will also, and certain disbelievers will also be brought back to life. So Imam Abu Hanifa says to Imam al Taq, that I heard that you believe in Raja'a. Imam al Taq says, yes, of course I believe in Raja'a, that is what my Master Imam Sadiq taught us. So Imam Abu Hanifa says to him that I want you to lend me 50 dinar. I will pay you back in Raja'a. I want you to lend me 50 dinar, I will pay you back in Raja'a. Muhammad Attaq says to him that I will lend you but you have to guarantee me that when you come back in Raja'a you will also come back as a human being. What if you come back as an animal then how will I get my money back from you? If you come back as an animal then how would I? How would I get your, my money back from you? And so Imam is teaching all of these people, he's making these people who are experts in the faith so that they can explain the religion to other people. So they can explain these difficult concepts that Imam is telling us. And then he tells us that, for example, a few hadith I'll just quickly mention and then we'll go to what's going on. Muhammad. He's telling us about the layers of meaning of Qur'an Kari. That Qur'an has got lots of layers of meaning. And that's why there's a necessity for there to be an Imam who can explain the Qur'an, who can explain these meanings of Qur'an. He says, for example, there's the text of the Qur'an, the Ibarah. That text is for everyone. Every person who reads the Holy Quran, according to their own knowledge and understanding, they will get benefits this from the text of the Holy Quran. Says then, there are some ishara in the Holy Quran, some indications. These are not in the text, but they are understood. These are for the khawas. These are for the special believers. They are able to understand these special meanings of the Holy Quran. Says then, there are some meanings of the Holy Qur'an which are hidden within these verses and they are only for the awliya, the special friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Imam al salam says the fourth is the haqaiq, the reality of this Qur'an and that's only Muhammad and Ali Muhammad al salam that is the reality, the haqiqat of this Qur'an. This text of the Holy Qur'an is for everybody. The haqiqat, the reality of it, that is that reality which revealed on the heart of the Holy Prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if we revealed it on a mountain, then you would have seen that it would have crumbled by the Khashyat the fit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though we keep the Quran on the on the table, it doesn't nothing happens to the table. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if we reveal this on a mountain, Jamalim, then it would have crumbled. But we keep the Quran on the table, nothing's happening. Why? Because this is the text of the Quran and that is the haqiqah, the reality of the Holy Quran, which is with Muhammad al Muhammad Muhammad al now Imam al -Islam, like we said, he migrated and migration is from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and of the Ayyam He migrated to Kufa. It's during this time when he migrated from Medina to Kufa that he identified the place of the burial of Amirul Mu'minin He identified the place where Imam Amirul Mu'minin is buried. Up until this time, people didn't know where is the grave of Imam Amirul Mu'min because he was he was buried in the middle of the night, 
And Amirul Mu'min Islam told the people that you have to keep this covered and hidden. Until the time of Imam Sadiq when he identified and told the people this is the grave of my grandfather Amirul Mu'min and he ordered for there to be a shrine to be built at that place. And then he educated people about the places in Karbala as well. And those of you who have been for Ziyarat to know that there, are, there is a maqam for Imam Sadiq in Najaf and there is also a maqam for Imam Sadiq in Karbala. And that was the place where Imam used to come and stay when he used to go for the Ziyarat of Imam Sadiq in Karbala. And there is a maqam of Imam Sadiq of course in Masjid Kufa and in Masjid Sahla. Regarding the maqam of Imam Sadiq in Masjid Sahla, I want to refer to us the story regarding that maqam, how did that maqam come into existence and what's the story behind it and inshallah we'll few words in Arabic and then inshallah we'll conclude. Rasa'a salawat ala Muhammad wa So regarding this maqam of Imam Sadiq salam in Kufa, in Masjid al-Sahla in Kufa. <coughs> Imam is sitting in his home and he's eating and one of his companions comes to visit him. When this companion comes, Imam says to him, you also eat. So he says, Ibn Rasulullah, I don't want to eat. Imam says to him, why are you not eating? I'm, I'm telling you to eat. He says, no, he's hesitant. Imam says to him, I order you to eat. Now there's no choice. Imam says to him, I order you have to eat. So he eats. So Imam says to him, what's wrong? There's something on your face which tells me that something is wrong. He says to the Imam, he says, yes. Whilst I was coming here, I saw something which made me feel very helpless and made me feel very sad and it's made me unhappy with my own self that's why I don't want to eat Imam says to him, what did you see? he said that I saw that there was a woman who was being dragged by the police towards prison so Imam said, why? why were they arresting her? why were they taking her? So this companion Bishr or Bashir says that I saw that she was walking ahead of me and she tripped or she was about to trip and when she was when she tripped or she was about to trip she sent la'anat on the killers of Zahra she did bara'at from the killers of Hazrat Zahra so somebody heard this and informed the police that the police came to arrest her. <coughs> Imam Salam was also aggrieved at this situation. So he sent one of his companions to the palace to see what's happening there. And he himself says to Bishr, you and I, let's go to Masjid al -Sahla. Now those of you who have been for Ziyarat, you know you'll find the real relate the rest of the story. That when you go to Masjid al -Sahla, Right in the center of Masjid Sahla, in the Sahan, in the courtyard, is the maqam of Imam Sadiq. So Imam comes with his companion and he comes to this maqam in the courtyard. And he offers a two rakat prayer at that maqam. And then he recites that dua that all of you, when you go there, you recite. You do the two rakat prayer and then you recite that dua that Imam recites. And so, Imam al -Salam, he goes there, he does that prayer, he does the dua. And after the dua, he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, release that lady. And there's that person at the palace who's watching to see what happens. As soon as he hears Imam completes his prayer, that person comes from the palace. And he says to the Imam that, I have good news that that's woman has been released. 
the government, they released that. They released that lady. And they wanted to give her money, but even though she was in difficult situation, she didn't take that money. Imam al Islam says, who heard this and became pleased that Alhamdulillah she got released. And he said that take this money from me and go and give it to her from my behalf. And tell her that I remembered her and prayed for her. She sends a message back to the Imam Islam saying that tell the Imam that if it's not for the Imam, then there's nobody in this world who cares for us. There's nobody. And this is for every single Imam. If it's not for the Imam, there's nobody in this world who cares for me. And the amount and the level that Imam al -Islam cares for me, you can see from the story. That, to the extent that Imam al -Islam cares for every single person amongst his followers. How much does he care? Let's watch you relay one more story, then we'll watch him aside. Rasa'a salawat ala Muhammad ala. How much does he care? There's a companion of Imam al Salam, Mufaddal ibn Umar. Mufaddal sees that there's two people, two followers of Imam al Salam, they're fighting over some financial issue. One person is saying to the other person, You owe me money. The other person says, I don't have money, I can't give it to you, whatever. Mufaddal says, What's the problem? He says, The problem is this person wants money, this person is not giving the money. Mufadal says, come to my house, both of you. Mufadal brings both of those people to his house. And he takes out the money. He gives it to the one person, he says, give it to that person. The one who needs the money. <coughs> he gave the money. Imam al Salam says, and Mufadal says, this money doesn't belong to me. This money belongs to Imam al al And he ordered me, that if you ever see two of my followers fighting over financial issue, take from that money and give it. Take it from that money and give it to them because remember that making peace between two believers is better than 70 years of praying and fasting. Making peace between two people is better than 70 years of praying and fasting. <laughs> Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Recite one more salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. We we'll just quickly mention one hadith. I know there's no time. We we'll mention one hadith Arabic and then inshallah. Mention Musibat al Imam al Islam. Ali ibn Ibrahim an Abihi an ibn Abi Umair an Abdullah ibn Sinan an Abi Abdullah. عليه السلام قال ما من مؤمن إلا وقد وكل الله به أربع شيطانا يغويه هو يريد أن يذله وكافرا يغتاله ومؤمنا يحسده وهو أشدهم عليه ومنافق يتبع أثراته Muhammad Salam says there are these four. For every single believer, there are these four people around him that he has to be conscious. Who are they? One, there's a shaitan who wants to mislead him. There is a unbeliever who wants to fight him. There is a believer who envies him. And there is a hypocrite who tracks down his mistakes for evil purposes. Imam Ali Salatu Salam. He lives in this difficult time. That and he chooses to propagate the knowledge of Ahmed Bayt in this difficult time. And one thing that he always focuses on throughout his life is the remembrance of Imam Hussain. Remembering Imam Hussain and especially the tragedy of Imam Hussain. Throughout his life, memory of the tragedy of Imam Hussain. Imam Sadiq is the one who educates us about the ziyarat of Imam Hussain the ziyarat of Ashura, the ziyarat of Arba'in, the ziyarat of... Reciting on all these different occasions of Imam Hussain taught by 
Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. And remembrance of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. He's the one who establishes the remembrance of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Every time Muharram will come, he will gather the people in his household and he will call the poets, the reciters, and call them and tell them, come and recite the musibat of my grandfather Hussain alayhi salam. Come and recite the musibah of my grandfather Hussain alayhi salam. One day, he establishes a majlis in his house. The person who he called to recite is a relative of the mother of Imam. So he recites the Qasida. In that Qasida, he adds a line. And he says, addressing the mother of the Imam, that if something happens to you, or you die, there will be people around you who will weep over you. There will be people around you who will console you. If your son dies, there will be people around you who will give you condolences. But on the day of Ashura, on the day of Ashura, when all the men were killed, and only the women were remaining, then people didn't come to condole those women. Instead, they came to burn those tents. Instead, they came to slap the cheeks of those little children. Instead, they came with the whip and they ca came and whipped the backs of the people. Allahu Akbar. One day, in the time of Imam Sadiq Mansur Abbasi gives the order to Set the fire, set fire to the house of the Imam. The house of the Imam starts to burn. Imam comes out, he sits in the courtyard and he begins to weep. One of the servants says to him, Imam, your house is on fire. Imam says, I remembered the tragedy of my, of my grandfather Hussain. That after he was killed on the day of Ashura. After he was killed on the day of Ashura, they came and they burnt the tents. One by one, the tents started to burn. One by one, the tents started to burn. Finally, there was one tent left. Hamid ibn Muslim, who is the official reporter of Yazid, narrates that I saw that there's one tent left after all the tents had burnt. There's one tent left and I see there's a lady who goes inside that tent. She comes back out of the tent. She goes inside the tent, comes back out of the tent. I ask her, is there something valuable in this tent? She tells me, my nephew Ali ibn Hussein is in this tent. Hamid ibn Muslim says, some while later I see that she's dragging that uh, young man who is on the bed out of that burning, out of that burning tent. <laughs> Imam alayhi salatu salam, he's come to the end of his life. Mansur Abbasi calls Imam alayhi salam. He adds the poison to the grapes. Imam alayhi salam has the grapes. And then he passes away in this month of Shawwal. It's mentioned that Imam والسلام, has a grand funeral. There are thousands of people at his funeral. He must have at that moment in time when he's in his final moments. Remember Imam Hussain That my grandfather Imam Hussain والسلام, did not have a grand funeral. My grandfather Imam Hussain والسلام, did not have a grand, he didn't even have a funeral. When on the day of Ashura, on the day of Ashura, the forces of Yazid buried each and every one of their dead. They buried each and every one of their dead. Then there was an order from Ibn Ziyad to Umar ibn Sa'ad that I want you to trample the bodies of the Shahada. Every single person, every single one, had somebody who was related to them in the side of his head. Every person came and said, don't trample the body of Fulan because he's related to me. Don't trample the body of Fulan because he's my friend. Don't trample the body of Fulan because 
He has some kind of relationship with me. All of the bodies are removed. Only the body of Sayyid al-Shuhada, Imam Hussain al-Salam remained. Abi Abdullah Hussain al-Salam remained. See the Zainab turns towards the Medina. She looks and she says, Oh my grandfather Rasulullah. Every single person has wasata today. Every person has wasata today other than the son of Rasulullah has no wasata. Son of Rasulullah has no wasata. 30 people were brought with the special horses which had the special hooves attached to them to trample over the body of Allah. To trample over the body of Abi Abdullah and Hussain alayhi salam. But one final thing I have to mention, and that is that yes, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, you had a grand funeral. And yes, you would have remembered your grandfather Hussain alayhi salatu salam. But what happened after you were buried in that place is no less of a masib. Why? That is the place where four of our Aima alayhi salam are buried. Whereas in Najaf, in Karbala, in Kadamiya, in Samarra, we know that every Imam salam, he has a grand shrine on top of his grave. There is gold and silver on those shrines. There is lighting on those shrines and those graves. But the Aimma of Baqi, of whom the fourth is Imam Sadiq salam, there is not even a mark on that grave. There is not even a place where one can go to recite the ziyarah of Imam Islam in that place. If you go there and you stand at that place, they come and beat you and say, move from this place. These are four of the Aimma alayhimu salam of ours who are buried in that place where, yes, Hussain alayhi salam, your body got trampled. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, your grave has been trampled, bulldozed over, not even a Mark of the grave is remaining. Allah, Allah, not Allah. Allah, the most zalimin was the alim of the dina. The most ayam of the people in the world. We pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for the acceptance of our majlis. We pray Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to, for the sake of our tears and the sake of Imam Al Salam and the sake of this musibat that we mentioned, to forgive our sins, to elevate the status of our marhumin. To allow us to act according to the teachings of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. To give us their ziyarat in our lifetimes and shafa'a and intercession in the next life. To protect us all from all kinds of illnesses, spiritual and physical. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure all those who are sick and alleviate all those who are suffering and hasten the reappearance of our master and make us amongst those who serve him. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta sami alim bi haqq Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin Before we recite a salawat, recite a fatiha and three times a khalas for all the marhumin, especially for those who have established this majlis and contributed to making it possible. Rahimallahu may yaqra'ul fatiha masbukatun bi salati ala Muhammadin وآله محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله محمد